Nearly two years have passed since an earthquake and tsunami disabled Fukushima Daiichi. Plant operator Tokyo Electric Power Company is still struggling to deal with the growing amount of contaminated water on site. TEPCO managers have delayed the operation of a new water treatment facility because of a series of setbacks. Each day, about 400 tons of groundwater flows into reactor buildings. It then becomes contaminated with radioactive materials. As the volume increases, so does the radiation levels at the plant. And if a leak happened, the impact on the environment would be more severe. TEPCO managers plan to start operating their new treatment facility last September. It's designed to remove 62 kinds of radioactive elements from the contaminated water, including radioactive strontium. Workers have completed the facility, but they haven't started using it yet because they determined containers for storing radioactive waste from the decontamination process weren't strong enough. The government has ordered TEPCO to conduct additional tests and to strengthen the containers. TEPCO representatives say it wants the facility to begin operating as early as possible this year, but they have set no clear date. Industry ministry officials have outlined the gravity of the problem. They estimate about 300 tons of radioactive groundwater is getting into the ocean every day. They say some 1,000 tons of water flows daily from a mountainside into the ground below the plant. Of that, 300 tons accumulates in an area TEPCO engineers know is contaminated with radioactive substances. That's the tainted water that's leaking into the ocean. Aside from that, ministry officials say 300 tons of groundwater doesn't get contaminated and it also flows into the sea. The remaining 400 tons of water leaks into the basement of the building's housing reactors 1, 2, 3, and 4 at Fukushima Daiichi. That water becomes contaminated. TEPCO workers pump it out and store it. Industry ministry officials say their figures are based on water table data offered by TEPCO and not a detailed analysis of various data. They say they cannot rule out the possibility that contaminated groundwater started leaking into the sea just after the accident at the plant in March 2011. TEPCO officials admitted for the first time last month that contaminated groundwater is getting into the ocean. We have not checked the figures given by the industry ministry. We are currently unable to say how much of the groundwater is getting into the ocean. Please give us time to check on this. TEPCO managers are considering freezing the soil beneath reactor buildings. Crews would bury a number of pipes underground. Coolants kept at minus 40 degrees Celsius would be circulated inside. The frozen soil would form something like a wall and act as a dam to prevent water from getting into the contaminated area. But it would take one to two years to complete the work. It will also be extremely costly to maintain the cooling operations. Also, no one has ever succeeded in keeping such an extensive underground area frozen for such a long time. Industry ministry officials will meet on Thursday to go over details of the plan. Researchers from the University of Tokyo say radioactive contamination of the seabed near Fukushima Daiichi is very high. Scientists from the university spent a year till last July measuring cesium-137 in the undersea mud of the plant, off the plant. They say levels of radioactive cesium at 40 locations within 20 kilometers of Fukushima Daiichi were more than five times surrounding areas. The locations coincide with depressions in the seabed. The scientists conducted a similar survey near a river mouth about seven kilo 70 kilometers away. They found contamination by radioactive cesium at two locations in the estuary of the Abukuma River in neighboring Miyagi Prefecture was more than twice the level of surrounding areas. The scientists suspect that runoff from rain may have carried the cesium into the river. The research we did revealed that the concentration levels of a radioactive substance changes locally, not uniformly. The group says it will continue its study to identify areas where radioactive substances are likely to accumulate. Many fishermen in the region call TEPCO's work to stop the contaminated water leaks inadequate. The current situation has forced them 
to make a tough decision. They've postponed deep water test catches planned for next month. Members of a fisheries cooperative in Iwaki were going to carry out the test. The city is 30 kilometers from Fukushima Daiichi. Fishermen suspended all commercial operations off Fukushima Prefecture after the nuclear accident. But last year they started catching some types of seafood in limited areas on a trial basis. They wanted to expand the area where they do their test fishing as part of their efforts to resume full-scale operations. We had no choice but to halt the plan. It's important to gain consumer understanding before we go fishing. Cooperative members say they will decide when to expand their test fishing once they get the results of radiation checks they're doing on seawater. The head of Japan's leading national association of fisheries has lodged a protest with TEPCO. The company recently revealed that contaminated groundwater at the Fukushima power plant has leaked into the sea. The organization's head, Hiroshi Kishi, visited Tokyo Electric Power Company headquarters. He handed a letter of protest to President Naomi Hirose. You must stop leaking contaminated water into the sea. We have repeatedly asked your company to do this, but you have ignored us. We feel betrayed. Kishi demanded that TEPCO state how it will contain tainted water accumulating in the complex. He also said the company must take immediate measures to stop the leakage. He also urged the company to increase monitoring for radioactive substances in waters near the plant. Hirose said he would work to comply with the requests. High concentrations of radioactive substances have been detected in monitoring wells near the shore since May. Fishermen are angry at the operators of the Fukushima nuclear power plant. Tokyo Electric Power Company has admitted that contaminated underground water is seeping into the ocean. About 100 fishermen attended a private briefing session by TEPCO. Officials from the utility reportedly said this spread of contamination is limited. They also explained their plan to build walls along the coast to prevent tainted water from leaking into the ocean. Some fishermen reportedly said TEPCO officials may have deliberately concealed the information. Others say they cannot trust the firm. I've lost hope. I feel nothing but anger. The fishermen are also worried about the impact on their plans to resume fishing on a trial basis in September. The head of a local fisheries cooperative said the announcement is a serious blow. A TEPCO official expressed his sympathy. The issue of the contaminated water is a real concern for the fishermen. I can't apologize enough. Nitsuma also said TEPCO will take a series of measures to try to rectify the situation. The massive tsunami of March 2011 wreaked havoc along the coast of northeastern Japan, forcing many beaches to close. 11 out of 70 will be open this year. They include a popular site on an island just three kilometers from the earthquake's epicenter. NHK World's Akane Nakajima has more. A beach on the island of Ajishima is reopening for the first time in three years. Locals participate in a Shinto ceremony to pray for a good summer season. A few people brave the chilly weather on this first weekend to take a dip. The area is famous for its crystal clear water and peaceful atmosphere. The water is cool. I'm having so much fun. It feels great. The beach is so clean. It's hard to imagine it used to be a pile of wreckage. Locals have worked hard to install public lavatories just two weeks ago and a watchtower just three days ago, just in time for the reopening. The beaches of Ajishima used to attract around 30,000 visitors every year. They resounded with the shouts of children playing in the water. All of that came to an end with the tsunami of March 2011. The entire shore was covered with rubble, driftwood, and broken fishing nets. Residents were concerned about the large amount of debris on the seabed. Everyone young and old participated in a long and painstaking cleanup operation. 
We clean the beach almost every day. We remove things from the water and the shore and threw them away. 13,000 tons of rubble have been removed so far from Ajishima. And after two years of efforts, the islanders have finally cleared one of its beaches. Signs mark the directions of escape routes in case of a tsunami. The high grounds allowed all locals to survive two and a half years ago. Tourists who used to visit every year are starting to come back, lured by the prospect of enjoying the pristine waters of Ajishima. The island was so quiet last summer because no bathers were around. We are very happy to see all the progress we've made this year. We islanders take great pride in the beauty of the ocean. We're thrilled to see visitors coming back to enjoy our magnificent waters, nature, and local cuisine. The islanders still have a long way to go to clean up the entire coastline. But they've made a big first step toward returning their island to its former glory. Akane Nakajima, NHK World, Ajishima. And local officials say the waters around Ajishima pose no risk. They say radiation readings are below the safety limit. Researchers from the University of Tokyo say radioactive contamination of the seabed near Fukushima Daiichi is very high. Unusually high ocean temperatures are helping fishermen in northern Japan. They are catching a lot more bluefin tuna than usual. Fishermen brought home 95 of the fish in the 10 days through Wednesday. They only caught seven in the same period last year. I've never seen such a big catch before. Officials of the Fisheries Research Agency say the sea temperature of Hokkaido is about 15 degrees Celsius. That's three degrees warmer than usual. It's ideal for bluefins. An agency expert says the warmer water is attracting the tuna and the fish they feed on.